Hello everyone and welcome back. Welcome to another Crafty Decor Adventure. Olivia here at Olivia's Romantic Home and in today's video I am so excited to share with you 10 DIY Deli Tree French Farmhouse Decor Crafts. So this is another episode in my huge I love Home Sweet Home series. Um, listen, I love to share with you guys so many ideas on how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a budget. So if you love to craft and decorate on a budget, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It's totally free if you punch the bell and click all will update you every single time I post a new video. And also don't forget to follow me over on my Livia's Romantic Home Facebook page. I also have a free little group page you guys can join if you want to share photos of your home decor and DIY projects. I love to see what you guys are up to. You have such an amazing time talent and I'm so blessed and honored to have such a wonderful community so thank you guys. Hey now without further ado let's go ahead and plug in those glue guns, get out your glitter and paint and let's get to craft. The next Dollar Tree DIY I'm going to take this sign and Wendy actually sent this to me. She sent me these two signs and then I already had this little tray on hand. I decided to take all three of these and I'm going to make a three tiered tray. Okay so I just want to take some spray paint and spray paint the entire signs and the trays and then I have a little dab of Waverly chalk paint left and I wanted to just go ahead and chalk paint them. I wasn't completely satisfied with the coverage from the spray paint so and I ran out of the chalk paint so I ended up using my Dollar Tree $1 white acrylic paint which it actually works pretty great you guys. Now I'm taking two candlesticks and these were also painted white with some spray paint and I'm just going to use some E6000 glue and you want to go around the rim kind of add the E6000 glue and then add some hot glue. The E6000 glue will hold your project together permanently the hot glue will help it stabilize temporarily so it's a great little combo here it's kind of magical so I'm adding the tray and then the smaller one to the top and now I want to take some black paint and I'm just going to edge it along the edges I want to make it look vintage farmhouse chic here by making it look kind of like an enamel tray now these tier trays are so expensive so if you guys have some Dollar Tree um, little signs laying around that have seen better days or that you're just not inspired to use for decor flip them over give them a paint job add some candlesticks and voila you have a fun and fabulous tray for next to nothing you guys so easy to do and these are so great to use in all of your seasonal decor whether it be Christmas or spring or fall which I am so looking forward to or you could use them on a bridal table really the sky is the limit on how you want to use this so I'm gonna pop some of my faux muffins in here and if you guys have not checked these out I'm going to link some in my Amazon store and then my cute little fresh eggs daily Dollar Tree sign. I'm going to share with you guys how to make these other projects over here, but how cute does this look? Now you can leave this set up as long as you want because the muffins are faux. I also added a romantic rose and there you have it, a fabulous little centerpiece decor piece on a teeny tiny budget. Don't hesitate to look around your stash and see what you have that you can craft with and make something beautiful. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take some of these wooden beads and I'm just going to empty them onto a tray. And I want to take a pipe cleaner and string the larger beads onto this pipe cleaner. I want to make one of those pretty little beaded decor pieces that you guys see everywhere. And you also can buy the beads already painted, but I wanted to see how hard it was to paint these beads. So I strung them on to this piece of pipe cleaner, and then I'm just going to take some of this spray paint and spray paint them. And I ended up hanging them from a tree to really give them a good coating. Now it did take a bit of spray paint, but it's okay. I already had it on hand. Then I'm going to take some hot glue and I'm just going to hot glue the end of the pipe cleaner. And then I twisted it and kind of wrapped it and pushed it down on top of that. And that pretty much sealed my little bead off. You could also use wire. I'm using what I have on hand. So I'm taking some of that Dollar Tree um, twine and I want to make a tassel. So I'm just going to wrap it around my hand. And I also want to use some Baker's twine and add in some pretty brown and orange. You guys, I am thinking thinking of fall decor coming up. So I wanted to make something that would be really cute on a tiered tray. So I'm just adding in some baker's twine and basically I'm just homemaking a little tassel here. I'm gonna fold it at the top and then just use a piece of twine to tie it off at the top. Now you all could use yarn and I've even created these before using strips of fabric. So they're super easy to make, very customizable for whatever season you're decorating for. I'm gonna add a dab of hot glue and then I'm just gonna push the bead down and 
inside of the tassel. Now there's maybe a different way to do this, but I thought this was a fun way and it worked for me. So I'm also gonna take one of those cute little Dollar Tree tags and these pretty transfer um, letters. They say Bone Appetite and they're just like using a Cricut except for they come in sheets at Dollar Tree so you don't even have to have a Cricut anymore. They have transfer letters at Dollar Tree so definitely check those out. So I'm just gonna add the bone and then the Appetite underneath that and they're basically like a sticker and then you rub on top of it. I'm using this popsicle stick. Um, you could really use anything, a credit card, whatever suits your fancy and then you just peel the transfer tape off and you have a beautiful little customized tag. I thought that would be fun to put on the end of this. I'm just going to tie this onto the end because if I want to take it off and make it more for a different season, that'll be super easy to do. So you have a beautiful decor piece. You still have a ton of beads left over. You could make several of these very easily and really decorate your home in that kind of fun farmhouse chic style. I'm giving it a little bit of a trim here and then I did use some twine to tie a bow and just add some twine to the top that's also going to secure that pipe cleaner and um, give it a really nice finished look This next Dollar Tree DIY is such a fun one. You're just gonna take some greenery and I took a piece of lamb's ear and then some of this Walmart lavender and using some zip ties, I just zip tied them together and then I used some smaller pieces of lavender left over from another project and I'm going to zip tie them on to the top. So you can use like a piece of garland. I just used the end of a lamb's ear garland but any greenery back behind this would work. I wanted this to have like a French farmhouse chic effect. You know, when you look at magazines and they're sharing a lot of French decor or farmhouse decor, you'll see hanging bundles of lavender during the spring and summertime. Now I'm going to make a really cute little easy bow using my easy bow maker. You guys can grab these at the craft store or on Amazon or Deco Exchange, or you can just make a quick little bow by hand. I have a great little Olivia bow video I'll link down below for you. So for this bow, I am doing a little bit smaller. It's gonna be five inches across if you do have an easy bow maker. And I do love the easy bow maker because it saves my fingers after long stretches of crafting. Sometimes I just get lazy, honestly, and use it. But you guys can see, all you have to do is pop your ribbon in and it holds it right there in the center for you. And then you have two beautiful little tails. Now listen, don't forget to dovetail those ends. Using some scissors, just pinch this and cut a little triangle in an upwards direction. And if you guys can tell, I still have not found my craft scissors. I'm still using kid scissors. I'm gonna have to make a point this weekend <laughs> to order some new crafting scissors. Okay, so now I'm just gonna fluff out my bow and really that's the secret to your bow. You've gotta give it a good little fluffing. I like to fluff it after I get done making it and then once I get onto my project. And I have been loving using zip ties for the center of my bow. It's got a really great hold. You do want to though use something to cover up the center of it unless you're really gonna give your bow a nice fluffing and you're not gonna be able to see it. So I'm just gonna pop it onto the top of my little hanging lavender bundle and this is probably the easiest floral that I have done all season. So you guys can totally do this, especially if you're a newbie arranging florals, or maybe you just don't want to do any big floral arrangements, but you do want a pop of color and a hint of springtime French farmhouse lavender somewhere. Now I'm using this little Dollar Tree smaller ribbon, and I'm just going to um, cover up my zip tie by winding it around the top of this. And then you can use that same ribbon to make like a little hook that your um, pretty lavender can hang from. I have this cute little shelf in my dining room. And I was looking at it and I didn't have anything hanging on the little hooks. And I thought, gosh, wouldn't it be cute to do like a little French farmhouse chic look? I have some vintage dishes that I picked up. Now, here's another fun idea. I don't think that these normally would be a hanging like arrangement bundle, but we're gonna use some of this Dollar Tree longer white blooming flower some Dollar Tree greenery, and then just some of these bits and bobs of lavender that I had left over. Again, just kind of creating that fresh um, farmhouse appearance. 
and like it's just been freshly picked from my garden, even though it's faux, but hey, there will be no mess or fallout from these. So again, I zip tied everything together and then just using this cute little piece of ribbon, I'm gonna tie off the end and then also create a little hook for it. guys how to make kind of a floppy scrappy bow I'm gonna make just a lantern bow so I'm gonna take some of this ribbon this is just ribbon I have in my stash it came from burlettefabric.com and I'm just gonna take some of the striped ribbon and then this really neat netting ribbon I'll leave a link for burlettefabric.com down below for you guys the coupon code to get five dollars off is Olivia spring and so I'm just cutting these are about 14 to 16 inch pieces but you You'll want to cut your ribbon however long your lantern is my little lantern really isn't that tall I like to make extra large bows and I'm gonna have to find a taller lantern but I just really think this one is so cute and so many of you ask where I found the lantern and it was at the thrift store so but for this bow you're just gonna take and you're gonna fold your little ribbons in half it's super easy and you're gonna hold them in the center with your finger and just begin to continue to fold them in half what I love about this bow is um, it really uses up a lot of extra scrap ribbons so so fun easy and fabulous and I love adding all kinds of different textures with the striped ribbon the buffalo check um, the little lace ribbon and then that netting ribbon I've also seen kind of the netty ribbon um, at Hobby Lobby as well so definitely check that out and don't be afraid to try some new things um, and then I'm just twisting this on with um, some wire it's just the Dollar Tree floral wire so you're just gonna twist it on to whatever little project you're going going for and then I did go ahead and begin to fluffy out my little loopy bow scrappy bow um, I know there's another name for this but I just cannot for the life of me remember it Julie Samaka originated this one over at Southern Charm Reese go check her out if you love to make Reese I definitely adore her and then I'm just gonna add in some greenery I'm adding dabs of hot glue to the base of my greenery and then just I'm gonna pop it in underneath the bow so it's more gluing to the bow and really not so much the lantern um, you could also twist it on with floral wire but I find this method seems to be just fine and just continue to add in whatever springtime colors that you're decorating with and whatever suits your fancy I just feel like springtime greenery is so nice to use and recently I've also been crushing on some pops of purple I think that's so fun and fabulous for spring just to add in the lilacs and the lavender and I think it gives it also a very French farmhouse French country feel so here is how the finished product looked with this little lantern bow oh my goodness and then I have a little Dollar Tree candle popped into there trying to give my bow just a little bit of extra fluffing so definitely let me all let me know what colors you guys use for spring I know a lot of people use greenery are you using pinks pastels yet I'm definitely going going to go in for my home with a lot of whites and then add some touches of grays blacks and whites and then add in my pops of color as Easter draws near I'm definitely going to be going for pastels I love pastels um, but definitely the French country farmhouse look is speaker DIY I want to share with you all how to take some of those Dollar Tree terracotta pots and jazz them up or give them a little bit of a French country flair so again I'm using some of my homemade chalk paint and I'm just going to chalk paint these little terracotta pots and they're so nice they absorb paint so well I only needed to really use one coat with these and then I wanted to make them feel and appear a little bit more vintage and so I'm taking some of my Waverly antique wax and just a paper towel and I'm just going to kind of like distress them and then add a little bit of um, white paint on top of that especially if you get too much of the antique wax on top of that so anyway I'm going to do the other terracotta pot to match the first one and I always like to kind of rim on the inside because I may want to use them you know with flowers or something that you could kind of see down in the pot so that's just a little Little tip too and then I'm going to take these beautiful French country images and I'm just going to cut them out and again I'll leave an album on my Facebook page with some of these really pretty images and I'm just going to take
take and cut both of them out and you don't have to completely cut all the way around like the scrolly design because it's a little bit intricate although you could <laughs> um, but I also used a little bit light layer of hairspray on top of the images and that way the image doesn't bleed when I'm doing the Mod Podge part so now I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm going to Mod Podge on the back of my image and then I'm going to lay that down on the terracotta pot now this image was a little bit larger than my pot or it was the same size but you know then there's that little bump so you have to get really aggressive with your mod podging <laughs> I guess that's what you would say um, but again I'm just taking that a generous layer of mod podge and laying that down now it did make it bubble just a little bit but that's fine with me because it's supposed to be kind of French country and fun and you know just vintagey so I don't think it has to be completely perfect although you could resize your image to make it smaller and fit underneath the lip of the terracotta pot if you wanted to I just printed it as is I'm a little bit impatient and plus this gave me more images on my printed piece of paper so I'm gonna do the other one in the exact same fashion and then I have two fabulous little um, boutique gorgeous pots on a budget and the next thing I wanted to do was just add a little bit of foam inside the pot I didn't even hot glue the foam I was just able to like cut it and pop it down in there and then add these pretty little lilac branches or lavender I think these actually might have been my lavender anyway I'm just popping these pretty little spring flowers into here again these are from Dollar Tree and then voila I have this fabulous little French country mini pot on a budget you guys like really these would be at least six to ten dollars at your home decor store and then I'm adding in some pretty little moss again you can buy a bag of moss at Dollar Tree and I did share with you guys that topiary that's back behind these in one of my last videos so I hope you guys are inspired to do some spring dreaming and some pretty little planters. I really do a lot of fake florals inside right before the season starts because I'm patiently waiting for some of those really pretty flowers to be set out and even the herbs. I even bought real lavender last year and had that growing outside in my front yard. So. I'm really excited for the plant season. I don't know if you guys can tell, but we are going to be doing some real plants coming up very soon once my area gets past the kind of freeze point. We've even had snow in April before, although we have really nice weather now. So I'm always a little bit hesitant to set anything. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to take this Let It Snow sign and an another image from thegraphicsfairy.com. Again, the images that I find on there are totally free. This was just a French farmhouse rooster image that I printed and then I cut out and I just print it on regular paper and then I mod podged the back of the image and then I mod podged over the front of the image just to get it on there really good. I want to make a really cute little French farmhouse kitchen sign to go in my kitchen. I think this is such a fun and fabulous way to decorate especially if you love kind of the shabby chic farmhouse vibe. Now of course I did have to go a little bit extra and add some ribbon to the bottom. I'm also covering up where I had pulled um, that let it snow sign lettering off and if you don't have the, sn the snow sign on hand you can always use any kind of painted board or wood or you could even just frame this and add some embellishments around your frame so again get creative this is such a fun time to really think outside the box on what you guys already might have um, and so I'm just adding some more little burlap rosettes to the base of this I ended up using three I do order my burlap rosettes from burlapfabric.com there will be a coupon code for you guys below if you're interested and then I also have this cute little thankful sign. This is just one of those little silver lettering signs that you get at the Dollar Tree. It came off of another project. I'm repurposing and reusing it and just hot gluing it to the top of this. I feel like I need a daily reminder to be thankful right now. Comment and let me know if you guys are with me on that one. And really we do have so much to be thankful for. So here it is all together. I'm just loving this and I'm so thankful for you guys. Thank you for being here.
thank you for continuing to watch my videos and thank you for commenting. Please let me know how you're doing. It really just helps warm my heart. It gives me an opportunity also to pray for you all and others as well. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take this today's prayer card and I'm going to go ahead and use one of those little Dollar Tree scrolly mirrors. And I just added some hot glue to the top of the mirror and then I just added the prayer card inside it. Now for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take this large Dollar Tree gift box and I'm going to chalk paint the top of it white. I want to create a French farmhouse, um, a really cute, just little decorative box that I can use in my kitchen. And so I'm going to chalk paint the entire thing white on the top. And it did take two coats of chalk paint for this to be covered. And I will tell you, I really think this box is really super cute. Like I could see myself using it in my bathroom as decor or even my little um, beauty space. But for this particular DIY, I do want to do a French farmhouse um, look on this and so that's why I'm going to go ahead and chalk paint it white. So once I had it chalk painted all the way white, I let it dry probably about 30 minutes in between coats and then I gave it one more coat of chalk paint. And then I went to graphicsfairy.com and I did print out a really cute little um, graphic to go on the top of this, which I'm going to share you with you in just a minute. But now I'm going to take some of that Dollar Tree contact paper and my idea is to line the edge of the box with the contact paper. And that way I'll have a really cool kind of like, I think this is like really French farmhouse chic contact paper. It's so pretty with the black and white and it'll just give it a little bit of a different look rather than painting the entire thing white. And you could go even a step further and add contact paper to the inside of it or the bottom, but I really didn't feel like that was necessary. And I do struggle with contact paper just a little bit, so I felt like this was sufficient um, enough. So again, I'm just tracing the edges of my box and then getting the right size contact paper and then adding that contact paper to the edges of my little box. And that was also giving the top part of my box plenty of time to dry in between paint coats. And you're not gonna see the top lip, you can tell up here. So it's just fine to go ahead and pop that in here. You guys can make some really fun boxes like these, especially if you have room at the top of your kitchen cupboard and you just wanted something fun and decorative. Now the next step is to add a layer of Mod Podge. This was the Mod Podge that I used in that rustic cinnamon technique. So it did have a little bit of brown to it, but that was fine because I'm actually going to add another layer on top of that. And this little graphic was from graphicsfairy.com. It's free. You guys can go to their website and type in French country and you'll find all different kinds of French country um, graphics and ideas. And I will, um, try to post these on my blog as well and that way you guys can just go right there and you can click on it and download it that way um, but now I'm just using some little Dollar Tree embellishment with this pretty little ribbon and I'm gonna add that to the top and the bottom of this and that's just gonna kind of jazz things up a little bit I love kind of to embellish things and make them look just even a little bit more fabulous in my opinion. Now I'm taking these cute little burlap rosettes and I'm just going to hot glue them to the corner. I've shared with you guys before how to make burlap rosettes, but you just take the burlap, wind it around and make a cute little rosette. These actually came from a burlap site, burlapfabric.com, I believe. And then of course I had to add a little jewel to the center of that and voila, I have a fabulous little Dollar Tree box that looks like something, you know, that I bought at a boutique or a high-end decor store and we made it for next to nothing, especially if you guys have some of these little bobbles and goodies already in your craft stash. DIY. I have to share with you all how to make a super adorable vintage scale 
using this little Dollar Tree storage container. And I have to give a shout out to my friend J Money DIY who originally came up with this scale idea and also my friend at Our Green Acres who came up with the idea of how to rust something. So this is my take on this project and I'm using a little doll table and then the end of this ribbon roll and I'm just going to cut my little vintage scale piece and so you can Google vintage scale front and you can print out that image. That's how I found mine. Now I'm just gonna take my little doll table and this is in the kids section at Dollar Tree and I'm going to to hot glue that to the top of my container. I did flip my container over and then I'm going to hot glue the lid to the top of that and that's going to be like my little scale um, part. And so I will tell you too, you may want to um, paint your items first. I didn't do that on this. It came out okay. So, but just a little note, now I'm going to use a Dollar Tree napkin ring and then I'm going to take my little ribbon roll cardboard piece and you guys could use a plastic plate or a jar lid, anything that's round and circular. This was just easy for me and I just popped this on here. This is what I had on hand, so I'm using what I have. The next thing I want to do is take some of this satin rust-oleum. It's a granite spray paint and I just spray painted it and let it sit out in the sun until it dried. And then now I'm just going in with a little bit of my Waverly wax um, paint and I'm just kind of giving it a light dusting to make it look a little bit more vintage. You could also use brown paint, but pretty much really whatever you have on hand. Now for the next part of this DIY, I'm just using some Mod Podge and I'm going to add a layer of Mod Podge and then to rust it, I'm going to use some cinnamon. So this is such a cool technique on how to make something look old and rusty and I know pretty much everybody has a little bit of cinnamon and hopefully some glue. So once you get that cinnamon on, you can just take a little sponge and these are just Dollar Tree sponges and then you can add another layer of Mod Podge over that. And that's gonna give it this really neat resting effect. And you can let that dry and do another layer if you want to, which later I kind of think maybe I needed to have done that, but I was pretty happy with the results. It is a little bit messy, so make sure you have a little paper towel or something underneath your crafting space. Now I'm taking the little printable that was the um, vintage scale face, and I'm just Mod Podging that on to the front of my little vintage scale. And you guys, this one came out so fun and basically it was about $2 to create this. And if you've priced vintage scales, they're so much more expensive in the home decor stores. And we made this on such a tiny budget and then I just popped some faux lemons onto this. I'm actually going to move this inside once Easter is over and do a huge lemon display and make it really cute and kind of cottage chic in my kitchen area. So anyway, I just had so much fun creating this and I hope you guys are inspired to possibly create one of your own. Pick up one of those Dollar Tree storage containers with a little bit of paint and with those cute little doll tables, you can really go to town. For the next DIY, I'm gonna take some painter's tape and I'm gonna tape off the little cord on this lamp. Now this is a lamp base that I found at the thrift store for $5 and I actually gave you guys a little teaser yesterday on the Facebook Live video that I did for you and I asked you what color you wanted me to paint this lamp and French gray won out. This is actually the color that I used also on my walls and it was from Sherwin-Williams and it wasn't exactly called French gray. I'll have to take a look at the can again and I'll try to remember to let you guys know exactly what color this was but it's so pretty and it's what they call a grayish. So I'm just taking my paintbrush and I'm going to begin to paint this lamp base. Now I thought this was going to be a super fast project and to be honest with you normally I probably would have ran out and just bought some spray paint but this was definitely a labor of love. I ended up doing I believe about two coats 
And when I'm talking about a grayish, the new hot color I guess this year is a combination between gray and beige for your wall colors. And so I chose this color and the lady at the paint store said that the new hot color this year was grayish. So there you guys have it, but I think it's kind of like a French gray to me. Okay, so I did look at the um, paint can and it is called Repose Gray by Sherwin-Williams. And this is what I used for my wall colors in my living room. And I definitely want to share with you guys how I went about uh, repainting my walls. It was quite a project and we actually started it at the beginning of the quarantine. So now you guys can see I'm having to go in to get into those little nooks and crannies with a smaller paintbrush. Again, this was quite a labor of love, but definitely well worth it in the end. Once both coats were dry, I went in with some sandpaper and began to gently distress it. I didn't want it super distressed, just a little bit on the edges. And now I'm using some of this Waverly Antique Wax. And you get this at Walmart in the craft section next to the Waverly Chalk Paint. And you just put a little bit onto a soft towel and you can begin to just gently distress it or give it a little bit of a wax finish. And then I also went back over it with a little bit of sandpaper. If you get too much wax on, it's actually really forgiving. I think you guys would really enjoy this. Um, you just take your towel and kind of wipe that back off. But you guys can see I'm really trying to distress where all of those little crevices are. And again, this was quite the labor of love, but again, so worth it in the end. And I just love this look. It's just that kind of classic, beautiful, um, a French farmhouse vibe that I just absolutely love and I think I'm really happy with the gray that you guys suggested. Gray is really hot right now and I love that this gray does again have that warm undertone but I'm just going over it again with a little bit more of that wax and then you guys can see if I get too much I just gently rub that off and I really think it's giving it a nice soft effect. decided to do to give it a little bit more of a vintage vibe was to go in with a tiny bit of that gold with my paintbrush. I just gently brushed that on and that kind of gave it just a little bit of a pretty sheen and made it feel a little bit more vintage, which I really love. And because I did a little bit of gold on that tray, I thought that would be kind of the perfect accent to go along with this French country, French farmhouse theme. And then for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm just gonna take this little Dollar Tree kitchen sign, which I actually think is really cute. I'm gonna keep it, um, but I wanted to add this little French um, farmhouse saying. And in fact, if you all are French and you know what this says, definitely comment and let me know. I'm not for sure what it says, but I did get the graphic off of gra graphicsfairy.com. Um, all you guys have to do is just search a French farmhouse and you'll find some really pretty little sayings and sign additions. So I just popped it into this white Dollar Tree frame and I add it into this beautiful little um, 
setup here and I think it's just looking so fun and fabulous. I love this cream and black ticking fabric. I got it from burlapfabric.com but I've also seen it at Walmart if you all need any um, French country kind of curtain or fabric or whatnot. So for the next DIY I'm actually going to upcycle some of these Bath and Body Works candle lids. I'm going to take some of this chalk paint and again I used several different coats. I will suggest that I do like the Waverly chalk paint better than this kilns chalk paint it seems to have a bit more coverage so then once I had my little lids chalk painted I'm going to use some of this Dollar Tree contact paper and I'm just going to trace around the lids what I want to create is a coaster for my living room I cannot wait to redecorate for spring so definitely check back next week for spring decorating I will have a huge DIY video posting as well on Saturday but I'm just going to go ahead and trace around the little contact paper I want it to fit the very top of the lid. I'm just going to add it to the top of the lid. You guys, really the sky is the limit. Originally, I thought I was going to Mod Podge a French graphic onto this, but I spied a little bit of contact paper that I needed to use up. I've been using this pretty much everywhere. I used it in organizing my kitchen and laundry room. I just think it's so pretty and I love the black and white. I think it's so French country um, and just so fun and fabulous. So here is how they look and you can really pop these in anywhere for just a bit of um, black and white pops or um, just somewhere nice for you to set your beverage and it'll be something very pretty and nice to look at and it'll go along with your little French farmhouse chic country theme. Um, a lot of what you all see in my videos, I have a lot of questions um, of different things that you all see and I'm going to tell you pretty much everything is from the thrift store, flea market, or garage sales. So if you're wondering where these Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to take three Dollar Tree garden planters. I already have one painted white and then I'm going to take these other two and paint them white as well. What I want to create is a three-tiered garden topiary but I want this to be inside my home I really need some garden inside my home to lift my spirits and brighten my day comment if you guys feel me on that one so I'm just taking some Waverly white chalk paint um, really any paint will do if you're gonna be using it inside if you're gonna be using it outside you'll need to use an outdoor paint and seal it but again this one's gonna be inside so I'm just giving it a huge heavy dose of the Waverly white chalk paint So to create my three-tier potted plant, I am going to go ahead and add a large piece of Dollar Tree Styrofoam to the bottom of the pot. And then I decided to take that first layer out and add in some brown craft paper to really stabilize that Styrofoam. I'm rationing my Styrofoam right now because I'm trying to use everything that I have on hand. So as you guys can see that that brown craft paper works miracles on this project. Now I did decide to go ahead and add some hot glue and then in the smaller pot. This is going to be my second tiered layer and you're going to need to use quite a bit of hot glue. Now I'm going to use another piece of Dollar Tree styrofoam and pop that in to this second tier to then add the third tier. Now if you guys have seen these in stores they're super expensive even for the fake planted variety but if you guys are doing this outside you may want to add a wooden dowel down through the center of your pots. Again this is going to be inside so I'm not too worried about it. Um, I am going to go ahead though and now do my favorite part which is the arranging of the flowers. I'm using some Dollar Tree onion grafts at the very top and I'm just going to go ahead and pop that in to the styrofoam and then I'm using lamb's ear on the other side. When I do these three tiered pots I really love to add in my greenery first and then add in my florals second and I wasn't for sure if I was going to add florals but I decided that that would definitely be a good option. So I'm continuing to work greenery in and around the potted plant. Now 
I decided to go in with some beautiful florals. I have these white Gerardaceys on hand and then I'm also layering in some pale pink tulips. I am loving this so far. I think the pink tulips just give me that pretty dainty kind of shabby chic romantic vibe um, with that hint of spring and just a little bit of sweetness. Again, this is going in my crafting studio. I really wanted it to feel like it was spring and summer inside here and this is just making my heart smile so much. So I'm balancing the pink tulips. I'm adding several into one side and then offsetting them on the another with some more pink tulips. So I just popped this three-tiered happy beautiful floral on top of my little cherub planter. It has this little shell bowl that comes up. I got it at an auction years ago, but I have tried to source some similar planters and put them in my Amazon store for you all. And I am just over the moon loving the softness and beauty of this. So thank you all so much for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafty decor adventure. It is a true blessing and honor to have you all here. If you all are new, welcome. I am Olivia with Olivia's Romantic at home and I'm a DIY crafty mama. I love to share with you guys how you can make your home's boutique a gorgeous on a budget. I am a firm believer that you don't have to break the bank to have a fabulous, amazing home. Remember, give yourself grace as you're crafting and decorating, move things around, continue to work on things, and I just know you guys are going to find some joy in this process. And also, things don't have to be perfect. There's so many times when I have kind of like what Bob Ross says, you know, little happy imperfections um, or happy mistakes, I guess is his quote. So give yourself that grace and have fun with it and keep going for it and try out different styles, try out different colors. You guys know I'm trying to always bring you guys different colors and styles as well. So thank you guys again. I'm hugging all of your hearts so tight. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you punch the bell and click all. It will update you every single time I post a new video. I post several DIY videos a week on YouTube as well as several a day over on Facebook. So pop over to my Olivia's Romantic Home Facebook page. I have a free little group page you guys can join in on. On. So anyway, I love y'all to the moon and back. I'm hugging all of your hearts so tight. Listen, if you guys need prayer, I know everybody at some point in time is going through something. Drop a prayer request down below. I have a wonderful praying community here. And if you guys see something that, that you love, don't forget to heart people's um, posts or just be kind online. I know we all have a voice and we can all use that voice for good. And if you see something you don't like, all you got to do is keep on scrolling. Remember, if you put out positivity, a lot of times that positive will come back to you. So thank you guys again. I can't wait for our next video. And until then, remember, be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another. And we'll talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye.